uh, we took the ski out after, you know, well, yesterday the video files kind of got messed up, so we had to start over. And we cleaned uh, the electrical contacts on the IBR module where the CAN network signals come into the module. A lot of water, a lot of mud in the uh, IBR side of the connector, the socket. So we cleaned all that out with the CRC cleaner and uh, an air. And then we cleaned the female side of the connector, took it apart, cleaned all that up, used some uh, LPA tools, some diamond files to clean the inside of the connectors, sprayed that with CRC again, put it all back together, took the ski out, ran great for, what did you say, Bruce, about uh, an hour? Yeah. Uh, no no uh, fault codes, no, uh, what do you call it, limp home mode, it didn't do any of that. And then, uh, and then eventually, it, so it was probably the longest ride you've had before it went into limp home mode, right? Yes. Okay, Very much so, so uh, we, we did make some progress, and what we saw on the lab scope yesterday wasn't definitive. So when in limb home mode, brought the ski back, connected the can-do, and if you just look at the can-do, I've got two com faults now. Uh, one is lost communication with the IBR, and so if you kind of zoom in on that right there, you can say, okay, hey, I lost com with the IBR, and then the U401 is... CAN communications, error, IBR, or uh, intelligent suspension waiting message from ECM. So you've got another COM fault with the IBR. So I got two faults. So what we did was we connected the lab scope and, and we, let me get a pointer. Uh, my we'll just use a screwdriver. How's that? So our waveforms, we do have the two and a half to three and a half volt waveform. So this represents zero on the, the yellow trace. So it's one volt, two volts, two and a half to three and a half volts. That's good. I have a nice square wave here, but you see this hash right here? So we have some interference in the signal. And then on the can low, you have one, two and a half to one and a half. So remember that's, it's reverse polarity. So you have uh, one and a half there and you've got and they're mirroring. So that's correct, but again, you have this hash on the network. So what we did was we disconnected the IBR module and all of that hash disappeared. So that's what I'm looking at. I'm not looking at the wire harness. We're gonna go ahead and pull the connector and check resistance between the IBR and uh, the diagnostic connector because the IBR module is uh, $1,200. It's not a cheap part. So we don't want to throw parts at them. We want to make sure we're doing our due diligence and troubleshooting. And so we'll, we'll check the resistance. If the resistance in the wiring is good, uh, then more than likely. And, and based on a lot of the comments that you guys have said uh, on the forum, yeah, IBR module, look where it lives. It, it, it's like a magnet for dirt and mud and sludge and, and whatever lives in the ski. So, uh, and if you look at this module, where's the light? Here's the light. If you look at a module, you see the significant amount of corrosion on this. I'm not even sure what this part is, but yeah, this doesn't look very healthy. Uh, a lot of exfoliation corrosion going on here and rust. And so uh, I think this uh, module's uh, seen the end of life. But uh, anyway, um, we're going to take a quick pause and then I'm going to, because it's kind of hard to disconnect that connector where they put it. And then we're going to disconnect the IBR module and then come back and show you the waveform that doesn't have the hash in it. And uh, yeah, I think that's our, our module. So Bruce, go ahead. Oh, who's beeping at me? All right. So now, now we're back. We've got the IBR, uh, the power and the comm circuits disconnected from the IBR. And I can hit play and see the waveform. And I was going to hit pause for a second. And you notice on this signal, this reference voltage signal, which is... Uh, one two and a half volts notice the hash is gone on both there's a little bit here but it's not near as significant as it was on the can high and can low circuits so when you look at this hash on the uh, waveform itself uh, i think that's normal for the can circuit uh, i need i really need more experience myself in dealing with it but when i connected this to my ski which is you know 57 hours and no faults and i've got the same kind of oscillations at the top of the waveform and the bottom of the waveform down here as this key does. But I didn't have the hash on the reference voltage line. So I'm thinking, Bruce, you need a new IBR module. Sorry to, to bring that bad news to you, but uh, we're gonna check the harness next, check the resistance.
and make sure that's good before we call the module. Okay, we're, we're rolling again. All right, folks, so we uh, come to the sad conclusion that Bruce needs a new IBR module. We did uh, wire resistance checks from the IBR uh, comm network wiring over to the diagnostic connector, and you can't hold the camera like that. Yeah. It's got to be like that. So I'll just restate that snippet. <laughs> okay, okay, I was trying to get a close-up of that. So, so anyway, so we uh, checked our continuity from these wires on the IBR connector, uh, the can high and can low, over to the diagnostic connector. We're looking at two ohms, so we know we don't have a problem on the wiring. We know we're seeing hash on the lab scope uh, when the connector is connected to the IBR module, and there's no hash when we disconnect it. So we're going to call it an IBR module, and uh, Bruce is going to pay for it. <laughs> And then uh, I'll put it in, and we'll uh, get back to you and let you know how it goes. So, see you next time.